Welcome to Hacksby Shed. A few weeks ago I ran a four part video series on making this milling head for my shaper. And in the last video I said perhaps the only thing left to do would be to fit taper bearings to this motor. And several people said to me in comments, well if you do that it would be good to see it. So that's what we're going to do. I've come into the shop this evening just to do a little bit of the thinking work um, and I'll probably fit the bearings tomorrow and obviously I'll be videoing that. So I've taken this end off the motor and uh, maybe I'll zoom in in a moment but you can see the ball race on the end here. At this end uh, we have an ER32 collet, we have a big collar on here which I made <clears throat> and uh, that's got a big brass bush in it, a bronze bush actually, to hold this chuck steady and behind the chuck we've got a thrust bearing and then on the inside of the plate uh, we've got the ball race at this end. So I bought a couple of taper bearings. These ball races are 11 millimeters deep and actually um, when I was ordering the taper bearings some said 11 meters deep, some said 11.8 millimeters deep and I went for some which were 11 millimeters deep so there would be a direct replacement for these but guess what when they arrived no they were 11.8 millimeters deep so that must be the standard sizing for these 35 mil on the outside 15 in the center and they seem to be 11.8 millimeters deep for the taper bearings I'll show you those in a moment but what it means is to get this all to fit uh, exactly as it should I think I'm going to have to machine a little bit off the collar inboard of the bearings at each end so the bearings just move in very slightly like that a bit further onto the uh, armature. Okay so here we have the ball race on the end of the armature. 6202 is the bearing size. There's quite a bit of wiggle on it but it's brand new, it's normal but that's why we're changing uh, this for tapers for this particular application. Now I just want to show you though even though we know this bearing has quite a bit of wiggle, the one at the other end is the same, but actually I can't move this armature very much, it's pretty solid look, and that's because of the way that I've mounted the chuck with a thrust bearing which is acting against the opposite number to this. So that's pretty rigid as it is. Now that amount of loading is set by a spacer which is um, in the chuck fixing. Right, so these are the bearings that will replace this one. These are 3202s and you can see that I've put a zip tie on here because I'll guarantee to you that I would swap one inner with the other outer, you know how it goes. But these bearings, they're Dunlop as they're branded, they actually came in different size boxes and it's clear that they're made by different manufacturers so they're not a match pair. Does it matter for this? I'm going to say it doesn't matter. We're not building a Bridgeport mill here. Uh, it's an occasional use, small hobby shop, uh, milling head, and it'll be good enough. I want to check the clearance between this face of the bearing and the bottom of this bearing boss here. And so, I've put that on there. I've used the calipers to measure that distance. It's 46, near enough. This is 28.5 across, this rule, and so I can easily work out the distance between that face of the bearing and this that I'm pointing to here. And I can do something corresponding with this, and I'll just show you the maths, and I've worked out actually that the clearance is about 1.75 millimetres. Well, that just shows again that I really need to move these bearings in by 0.8 of a mil each, to maintain the right clearance on the end. It was just obvious but I wanted to double check it, that was all. This is a slightly uneven wave washer but its height ranges from 2 millimeters to 3 millimeters, which means that at a spacing of 1.75 millimeters, it's always under some level of compression. Well after that bit of thinking and planning I think we're ready to fit the taper bearings tomorrow, so I'll strip it down, press these ball bearings off, 
set the armature up, up on the lathe, machine 0.8 mil off the shoulders at each end, reassembling it to make sure that I get the preload right at this end between the thrust bearing, which is kind of there, uh, and the taper bearing, which will be inboard just here. And then perhaps we'll do a couple of milling tests. It was surprisingly good before, uh, given what it is and its limitations, and it might be just a little bit better with those taper bearings fitted. Well, it's tomorrow already, so let's get this thing apart. There's a screw up inside the chuck here to loosen, and there's a grub screw to loosen through this hole here. And that's my spacer washer to get the preload on the bearing. This is where everything goes on the floor. Excuse me. Oh, there we go. I've just put a sharpie on the plate here to make sure I get it on the right way around when it goes back. Take the thrust bearing off. Well, two bits of it anyway. And I should be able to pull the motor armature out now. There we are. I'm holding the armature from underneath. And the other side. So I'll just take 0.8 millimeters off the shoulder at each end. I've locked the saddle so I'll just dial it in on the top slide. Swap ends now. Here's a tip. Don't throw away your old box spanners because they're perfect for different sized tubes for pressing bearings on. This one's been in the bin at least once and I fished it out. Now the other end. I think I've got the cones on the right way around. I've just put a bit of grease on this. If I put too much on, you know, there's no shield. It will only just spray around inside. I think that'll be okay. I'll try not to drop the cone off inside. Where are we? Come on, come on, come on, come on. There we go. Now hopefully it'll press into this front housing without too much resistance. There we go. I can feel it just sliding in. There. Perfect. Look how it springs backwards and forwards there. Just pulling this cover on now against the action of the wave spring. Next we'll get this thrust bearing back on. It's already got a little bit of grease in it, it'll do. There we are. And then we put the key in. The next we put this collar on, lining up the marks that I made on it, that way. I'm not doing these super tight because I'll set all this when I've got the chuck on. Because it takes a bit of work to get that chuck to run as true as I can get it, which is probably uh, within about two thou, or 0.05 of a millimeter, if I've said that right. So next is to put the chuck on, but I need to get the preload right on that taper bearing. And I'll do that by putting a spacer between 
that face in there, if you can see it, in the bottom of that hole, and this, the end of the armature here. So the spacer will go on the end of this. <laughs> Come on. There we go. I hope you can see this. There's the shoulder within the chuck. And there's a slight step down to the end of the armature. So I need to measure that step down and then figure out what size of spacer to put in. Well, it's a bit difficult to measure these differences, but I've done it like that, look. Measuring on the shoulder within the chuck and then measuring in the centre on the end of the armature. You can ignore that figure. And basically I've worked out the difference is 0.55 millimetres. And I've actually got a very small, thin washer, which isn't going to come off here now. <laughs> And that is 0.6. So you can see actually it's reading 0.63, but it's near enough 0.6 actually when I measure it properly. So we put that on the inside of this washer. And that washer has a little bit of spring in it anyway. It's not very thick. And then I've got this Allen screw here with a spring washer as well underneath just to try and keep it locked in place. When I get completely confident about this, then I might even put some Loctite on this screw. But the Loctite I would use would be that type which um, you can unscrew for maintenance. You know, you don't have to heat it up to get it off. But we're still really, you know, a bit under development here. So we just take it in steps. Try not to lose that spacer washer as I put this on. There we are. Right, now to get this mounted up on the shaper and then get this chuck clocked and adjust it for best minimum run out. And then lock it all up properly and maybe we'll do a bit of milling testing. So I've got the chuck all tightened up and my run out look is about five one hundredths of a millimetre. So five times 0.4 is two thou. I've checked the parameters are right for this motor because I do use this inverter to drive a couple of motors. We'll load her up with oil. <laughs> I've put a piece of brass in for the first test. It's not on parallels, it's not clocked, it's just a test. I'll pull the head back a bit to where I need to be. That'll do. Clamp it up. Well, that seems to be all right. Okay, so happy with brass. Now we'll try steel. Now I'll just put a one mil cut on. Last time I used a carbide cutter, this time it's high speed steel, so, you know, that could make a difference. Well, it's given us a good enough finish, even though there was a bit of chatter there. I might have done better with the carbide cutter in there. I'll build up my experience with it. I may adjust the front bearing preload, but it seems to be okay. And for what I need, it'll do. I hope that was useful to somebody. And so thanks for watching Axby Shed. If you've been following my Odd Jobs and Stickers series, you'll know that this shirt was given to me by DJ from Foxburg's Fabergoblin. Thanks again, DJ. Nice shirt.